Mr. Ravi Ranjan has a master's degree in energy systems for University of Petroleum and Energy Studies and is currently pursuing his PhD. Mr. Ravi, okay. in, in the area of climate change, he has hands-on experience in international and national project management, training program, knowledge management, media and communication strategy. He has extensive experience in managing projects in India, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Nepal, Korea and Bangladesh. Now I would like to request uh, uh, Mr. Ravi to take the session forward. Uh, good afternoon all of you. Uh, my name is Ravi and thanks for uh, uh, introduction. Uh, we, I, I work with the All India Institute of Local Cell Government and uh, this organization is uh, uh, almost a 90 years old organization working across all the, uh, across all these, uh, most of the part of the India. Uh, today the topic that we are going to discuss is really important because uh, uh, see the thing is that the citizen engagement is one of the major component in most of the planning project and most of the government project. Uh, if you look into the, uh, uh, at the moment the missions which are going at the moment, this all talks about the citizen engagement. So uh, we have uh, today very interesting panelists. So I would like to invite my all panelists. So uh, the first is Mr. Kevin Louis, he is a councillor of prosperous cities of Melbourne, Australia. I would request him to please come on the dais. Uh, my next panelist is Mr. Geoff Lawyer, uh, Lawler, Senior Strategic Advisory, City of Melbourne, Australia. Please come on the dais. We have a, a honourable mayors from the various part of India's. And uh, I would like to invite Mr. Uh, Bharat Dangar, Honorable Mayor of Baroda Municipal Corporation. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Johar Saron, he's a, a CKO, Tel Aviv, to join on the stage. We have Sri Pratimesh Gite, Deputy Mayor of Nasik Municipal Corporation, India. So, thanks all, all my panelists. I think uh, we have a very interesting panelist today across the world, I, I would suggest. Uh, so, the thing is that uh, 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 in India, we have number of projects at the moment um, uh, going on. Uh, if, if you look into uh, the national policy labels, we have a smart cities, we have a Swachh Bharat mission, we have a Hirdaya, we have a housing for all. All these programs are running and I think these all are now into the phase of uh, where we are talking about the implementations part. And I think the, the, they, they all are the leaders, uh, uh, leaders and I, I, I see that the leaders are the, I, I, I say that leaders are very important uh, in, in these, these program implementation because they are the one who actually driving the, uh, all the projects and activities at the city level. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll just take maybe a, uh, sorry, we have uh, one more uh, 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 honorable mayors from, uh, mayors from the Agra, Mr. Sri Indraji Singh Arya. He's not there. Okay, sorry, he's, he's not there. So we have all the panelists on the stage. And uh, I would, uh, uh, before uh, handing over to the, uh, my panelist, uh, uh, I have a small presentation. So if we can have a presentation, I would just uh, uh, would like to talk about my organizations and also would like to talk about the citizen engagement part that what AILS is working and what are the components that we are covering. Uh, uh, the thing is that we, very old organizations, I told you it's been established in 1926, more than 90 years now. Uh, we have a presence across the India, these are our presence, we are almost available in entire India. So we have 35 centers at the moment uh, and these three centers are our own centers and through that we are working across uh, most of the projects and we are impaneled agencies for most of the local, uh, most of the government's programs. We have good infrastructures. Uh, coming to the projects, there are ac activities that AILSD does is basically we work with the advocacy, we work on the pure learning and exchange of experience, we work on the research and knowledge management, we also work on the program and project development, 
we also work on the decentralized corporations. We like we are working with the uh, urban uh, UCLG aspects. We are working on almost uh, almost entire South Asian countries as well under those uh, areas of work. Uh, we this is a small work profile. We are working on the urban governance. We work on the urban planning, building energy efficiency, climate change, solid waste management, urban poverty public financing for the urban infrastructure, health and sanitation. So these are the major areas that where AILAG works. Uh, we have a pull of set of various institutions under the All India Institute of Local Cell Government. We have a regional center for urban, urban environmental studies, which actually directly comes under the Ministry of Urban Development. Uh, we receive grants every year from the uh, urban development ministers ministry and we do a lot of capacity building programs, workshop and training programs under the RCS umbrella. It's based in Mumbai. We have RCS West. There are four RCS. One of the RCS is with us. We have the uh, uh, research and urban uh, planning division called Pruda, which is based uh, in Ahmedabad. We have the International Center for Equity and Inclusion of Transformations. It works on the uh, a marginalized community, urban poverty. So through that uh, cell, we do a lot of research activities and helping the Ministry of uh, 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 Ministry of Housing and Poverty. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, National Fire Academy. Then we we also work on the Energy Conservation Building Code cell. So these are like uh, 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 different institution which which comes under the All India Institute of Local Cell Government. Uh, I don't want to uh, talk much on this part, but yes, we are working on the smart cities project as well. We are working with the uh, five, uh, four smart cities under the Ministry of Urban Development. Uh, we are now at the moment working with the two state sponsor smart city programs, Rajnandgaon and Korba under, in the Chhattisgarh government. We are working in an almost entire missions uh, solid waste management part, uh, Ministry of Housing and Poverty Relation part. We do a lot of training programs under the uh, Amrut programs. We have an MOU with more than uh, 14 states at the moment, uh, extensively doing the uh, training programs in, across in, in, in entire India, starting from Jammu Kashmir to uh, Andaman Nicobar. We do publication also. You must have seen our urban update, which is a monthly magazine which talks about the urban issues, what are the urban urban challenges that the cities are facing, best solutions, practices. So these uh, these we cover under the urban update. It's a monthly magazine. We also have the local magazine. We have uh, uh, the regular uh, th SAC South Asian City Summits, which we do every uh, 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 annually. Uh, we are also impaneled with Amrut. We are impaneled with the Smart City, Swachh Bharat Mission, Skill India. These are the various international partners and the clients. Uh, 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 we are working with them or work with them. Uh, straight away, I'll just talk about the two projects where we actually we did uh, extensive citizen engagement part. And that's the reason I wanted to highlight before handing over to the panelists uh, so that we can have a uh, the uh, uh, proper discussion after the panelist presentation. Uh, I'll talk about the three uh, equity project, which is one of the funded project by the European Union. It's uh, at the moment it's going on. We are working with the Nagpur Municipal Corporation, Smart City, and the Amrut and uh, Swachh Bharat Mission. Uh, in the smart city part, uh, you you all know that the uh, uh, under the smart city programs, all the consultant who was who are actually working with the cities, they have to go with the the citizen consultation. Uh, I I see this this is a this is like a uh, you have the mandatory for doing this under the proposal development part. So most of the corporation and most of the urban local bodies has done it extensively. Uh, as per my uh, 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 if, if I'm not wrong, uh, the figures talks about uh, uh, the citizen consultation weightage was 16% of the total marks. So that was a huge, and all the cities were actually running uh, uh, for the for the proposal part. So they did all all very well. So we did also. We have online open discussion. We did online survey uh, submissions, online video contesting, printing. As essay competitions, award label meeting. So I think most of the part which the citizen can be engaged, we have done under the smart city programs in all the programs. Uh, these are the some of the pictures where we have reached out to the schools, industries, colleges, 
uh, even parks. There are many uh, innovative ideas that we have designed for the citizen engagement uh, under the smart city programs. We did five days mega event. We have also invited some of the musicians, some of the uh, singers for, for you know, doing all those activities. So I think this is a something which most of the cities has done and we, we plan in such a way that we got maximum citizen feedback. Uh, and we also got very good feedback. These are the, some, of the, uh, some of the facts and figures which we got it after the citizen consultations in these smart cities. Uh, another project that we have, we are working on the equity in uh, Nagpur, where, where we are talking about the inclusive and sustainable growth of the cities, uh, where we are trying to look into the multi-stakeholder approach. We are talking about the participatory governance and this project is for the next four years. One year is already completed, and we have done a lot of uh, citizen engagement. See, these are the uh, various uh, ward level meeting consultation, which we keep, which happened before designing of equity project. So, whatever the planning and uh, we are, we were talking about, and what the uh, equity frameworks are ta were talking about, we did all with the citizen consultations. Uh, this was actually, uh, I'll tell you, uh, even this was not actually part of the, man, uh, I say that so it was not a mandatory to do this, but we have, we thought that even if you are talking about the next four years programs and project and such a uh, pilot project, why can't we have such kind of a system and framework where the local bodies can really implement in the future planning. So that's the reason we included all these things and we have done extensive this consultation programs. We also created under this program City Development Forum, uh, where uh, I, in, the, in the previous session, um, uh, uh, Sonavani ji was here, and he was talking about the Nitin Gadkari ji that uh, he was, uh, is a visionary, and that is what actually we also understood the things, and when we started talking about this project, we thought that uh, why can't we have the, the local cities uh, uh, as a stakeholder under the programs? because ultimately city has to, this citizen has to run this whole show. So we created this forum called City Development Forum, where we actually gathered all the, all the all, all, almost uh, imminent person and personality and talk about all those things. So this is what the uh, engagement we talk about. And uh, with this, I would like to uh, just stop my, because there are a lot of things I can speak, but I think with the time limit, uh, I let's have a, a panelists to speak more on those uh, things uh, so that we can have a wider understanding. Uh, so thank you very much and with this I would like to, so I would like to invite my first panelist, uh, Mr. Kevin Louis. He is a, he's a counselor at Prosperous Cities of Melbourne, Australia. Kevin Louis has an extensive experience across the business, government and community sectors. Spent seven years at the City of Melbourne as a Chief of Staff to the former Lord Mayor John. So with this uh, Floor is with you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ravi, for the kind introduction. And I start by thanking you for the invitation to this very important summit. And I'm very honoured to be uh, here today, leading, heading up uh, the Melbourne Business Mission and see the Melbourne's uh, mission. But we're joined this time by the three levels of government, where we're joined by Mark Allen, uh, representing the state government of Victoria, and Grayson Perry from uh, the High Commission here as their trade commissioner. So my role as the elected representative and as the chair of the Prosperous City Portfolio is to work with management to engage residents, business and visitors as we implement the strategic objectives of uh, the Melbourne City Council. And as Ravi has just said, uh, community consultation is everything. So I think all involved in leadership here today will well know that cities are at the forefront of meeting many global challenges. Cities such as Melbourne have much in common with India, its great population centres. Rapid urbanisation and the impact of climate change will test us all. Melbourne has always valued its international connections, and this month I'm leading us set the, the City of Melbourne's first high-level uh, mission to India. Melbourne enjoys close ties with India through business, education and culture, 
Our city is an attractive destination for Indian students and for industry professionals. Currently 60,000 students from India study in Australia. Cultural high points such as Diwali are enthusiastically celebrated in Melbourne and we support an Indian film festival and other popular events. So Bollywood is not only celebrated here in India, but we certainly celebrate in Melbourne as well. We do this in a city renowned for its multicultural character. Melbourne welcomes people from many different backgrounds. Indian visitors find in our city a well-established Indian community that continues to foster close links between our nations. Melbourne's warm relationship with India began in 2008 when we formed a strategic alliance with New Delhi and I was very honoured to be actually present at that signing with the uh, former Chief Minister here in Delhi. This serves as the gateway for the City of Melbourne to expand our relationship with India more broadly. The purpose of this week's business mission is to focus on sectors that match Melbourne's capabilities to India's requirements. With our sound knowledge of trade and business in Asia-Pacific region, the City of Melbourne's role is to facilitate connections uh, between leading Melbourne business figures and decision makers in India. India is Australia's fifth largest export market and we believe we are well placed to explore commercial and research partnerships at national and local levels. Importantly, knowledge can be shared and we have much to learn from each other in planning for growth. While Greater Melbourne's population of, of a modest 4.5 million is far smaller than that of Mumbai and New Delhi, we must prepare for growth to ensure our city remains livable and sustainable. The municipality of Melbourne has seen a transformation or change in the past 25 years in its built form and population. In the next 35 years, Melbourne's population is projected to double. This will impact density, how we use public space, how we move around the city, and how we manage diversity and inclusion. There's a great deal that Melbourne can learn from India. Addressing our challenges in a new light as your cities are managing uh, urbanisation on a massive scale. The huge metropolis of Delhi is of course a powerhouse in India, a big player in the global IT industry with the world's second largest labour force and a popular uh, tourist destination. Melbourne has been proud to be named the world's most livable city for the past six consecutive years and we do not become complacent. We prepare for our future by investing in sustainable infrastructure and harnessing the best minds. As urbanisation increases, uh, new markets are emerging in urban design uh, and clean technologies. That's why during this mission we want to highlight Melbourne's strengths in designing intelligent transport systems, in water and waste management and in the sophisticated ICT sector. Currently, a $10 billion rail tunnel project is underway in Melbourne, transforming the way Mel Melbourne will move, Melbournians will move around the city. Perhaps most crucially, we value a city for people. A livable city, a city for people require careful planning. For example, City of Melbourne is active in climate change mitigation, including planting thousands of trees to increase shade and reduce the city's temperature. In a nation prone to drought, we roll out large stormwater harvesting projects and protect our parklands. We're encouraged that city leaders around the world uh, cooperate on practical actions, often with the help of philanthropists, philanthropists and international agencies. The City of Melbourne is a member of the C40 network of cities which share knowledge and drive sustainable action on climate change. The Eclipse Local Government for Sustainability committed to addressing climate change and 100 resilient cities pioneered by the Rockefeller Foundation. 33 city governments are participating so far. Melbourne has also been recognised globally for its smart city related activities. Smart cities work towards thoughtful connecting, connection of people, place 
and technology to ensure urban centres support our residents, uh, workers, businesses and visitors, protect and improve our environment and contribute to ongoing prosperity and inclusivity. Improved digital networks also increase people's access to service. Some have come to define smart city as technology-led, but in Melbourne, we put our people first with technology as the enabler for better experience in the city. At the City of Melbourne, we have also created the Smart City Office to work collaboratively across the whole organisation to help support changing ways of work. For example, City Lab, our service design and innovation lab, conducted a project with Melbournians who experience sensory disabilities, including those with, who are deaf or blind. The pro project sought to co-design mobility and transport experiences to ensure Melbourne services, footpaths, roads and amenities support the best experience for all. More broadly, we also host Melbourne's Knowledge Week to open up opportunities for all Melbournians to share innovative ideas and that, uh, Mel that Knowledge Week just completed last week. Finally, I am sure you will be familiar with this subject observations, we recognise the future is, is about young people. So young people aged from 15 to 29 make up the largest proportion of the residential population in the city of Melbourne at more than 40%. Melbourne is home to 227,000 students, which is a higher concentration of students than London, Boston or New York City. Of those 35,000, of those 35,000 international students, who play a crucial role in Melbourne's knowledge sector. Many stay on after their studies and starting their own business. 14% of our international students are from India, the second largest source country for international students. Finally, our vision for Melbourne as a smart city is simple. To enhance the aspects of our city that makes us uniquely Melbourne and intelligently prepare for the cha uh, changing needs of the community, the environment and the economy. So I am suppose I'm the warm-up act, but I'm about to introduce uh, Jeff Lawler, the City of Melbourne Senior Strategic Advisor. That title certainly underplays his, uh, his role, because Jeff has worked on a number of strategic projects, including chairing the implementation of Resilient Melbourne, a metropolitan resilient strategy. Jeff is also advising the City of, of uh, Greater Geelong, on a 30-year community vision. And following a career with the Victorian Public Service in heritage and city planning, Jeff joined the City of Melbourne in 1996 and was the director for 17 years. For most of that time, he was responsible for the city's strategy, which included uh, uh, strategic in, in strategies in the environment as well as in the, in, the, uh, in the planning areas. So Jeff has qualifications in architecture, uh, public policy, and management, and in 2016 was awarded the Public Services Medal for his work in sustainability for the city of Melbourne. So, can I take the honour of being in the chair and introducing uh, my colleague Jeff Lawler, please? Thank you, Mr. Kevin. I think you made my life easier. So, you already introduced, so I think. Uh, uh, so, floor is your, Mr. Jeff, and uh, we can have, uh, but before that, I just want to uh, introduce our two new panellists. Uh, 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 Dr. Reddy, he is a Municipal Commissioner of Greater Hyderabad. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the, our panel. Uh, we have uh, uh, another uh, panellist, uh, uh, Sri B. Rama, uh, Ramo, Ramohanji. He is a Mayor of Hyderabad. Uh, sir, please come on the desk. Ah, Mr. Jeff, please. Uh, th thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Councillor Louis, for your um, overly generous introduction. Um, and good afternoon, everybody. It's wonderful that you could be here, and I feel enormously privileged to be able to share a little bit of the Melbourne story with you. Um, I'm one of the management that Councillor Louis referred to that support the Council in what they do, uh, and I'd like to take you through a few practical examples of how the City of Melbourne Council goes about citizen engagement. 
You may have noticed that the photographs that have been uh, on the screen behind Councillor Louis and behind me, uh, the dominant thing in it is people. And that's really the, the emphasis of how the City of Melbourne has progressed. It is by engaging its people continuously. It's not sufficient in our case to do it every now and then, but to make the city for the people to enable people to feel it is their city. They can use it, they can use it to, to, to live, they can use it to work, they can use it to learn, they can use it to source pleasure, to find recreation, to attend the theatre, to engage in cultural events, to shop, uh, to, to visit their um, um, uh, advisors, uh, to go to university. All of this happens in a very closely spaced central part of the city that you can walk between all of these things. It's a, it's a unique part of Melbourne that it has deliberately tried to bring together a mixture of important uses for the state of Victoria such that in the relatively small space on every day there is approaching one million people coming into the centre to do all of those things and in many cases going home again. Uh, the City Council welcomes all of that and part of the, uh, part of the, um, uh, the, the, the imperative is to make it easier and easier and easier for people to access their central city because it belongs to them. Um, and as a consequence of all of that, we feel that we do enjoy a fine quality of life which reflects the inclusive nature of a multicultural community. Uh, all, us, all Australian cities are re really immigrant cities. They're not very old. Melbourne is about 170 years old. Uh, and there are approaching 160 different languages spoken in both Greater Melbourne and Greater Sydney. Uh, reflecting the, the nature of our multicultural community. And that of itself, respecting that, enhancing that, is a key to engagement. Uh, as Councillor Louis said, it's, it's always been a city designed by people for people, and increasingly we are co-designing with people to try and understand solutions to problems that affect them. There's not much point in us trying to make it up. We need to understand what will work for them before applying any sort of solution, be it technology or any other. Um, our approach to urban design puts people on show. As you can see from these photographs, the public streets are the parks of the city. They are the public domain. Uh, they must feel as a place that is safe, accessible, and you must feel special in it. You must feel as though this is a quality place that, that, that really does appreciate the fact that you are there. The footpaths, um, our Lord Mayor conducted a survey of um, the major uh, financial and corporate institutions in the city uh, uh, three or four years ago to try and understand what they thought was the most important thing that the council could do. He was somewhat surprised, but ultimately delighted, that the answer that came back was make good footpaths. Now, why good footpaths? It's just a pretty basic, ordinary thing. But in our city, they are the place where people interact. Uh, they're a place where that, um, that spark of social cohesion uh, and innovation through chance encounter can incur. And it's a really important part of the way in which Melbourne does things. Um, about every 10 years, the city has gone back to its community to refresh the vision for what the city of Melbourne should be. And I suppose the point about that is that uh, whilst engagement is happening all of the time, every now and then it's important to look at the future, but to do it reasonably regularly. And every 10 years has worked out to be what has been important to us. Uh, it's, it's the, the way in which that has happened, I suppose, is an interesting story. In the 1980s, it was people sitting in, in um, uh, the kitchens and homes of people, talking to them, trying to get their understanding. By, um, 19, uh, by 2007, there was a step change taken in uh, the undertaking of um, 
community engagement around a, a, a process called Future Melbourne. And what, uh, what the council was trying to do was to get to people who didn't normally have a voice through the established elites. And it was trying to do it in a way that was apolitical. So a very important thing that the council did at that time was to put this process under the hands of governance of a group of citizens who were appointed. The council paid for it, but it, it handed over the authority to this group of citizens to work out the best way to do it. And also very interestingly, at that time, it was decided to do this in partnership with one of the universities. The University of Melbourne was an equal partner because, as Councillor Louis said, Melbourne is very much a university city. And being able to get to that new community, especially young people, young students with their hopes and aspirations, was incredibly important. It also was the first time that the City of Melbourne uh, tried the use of the internet as a way of engagement, of getting two-way dialogue with its citizens. And it worked fabulously well at that time uh, because the important thing about using the internet was that firstly it meant that people could engage in their own time, but also it meant that people anywhere in the world could engage. So anybody who was actually interested in the future of the City of Melbourne was able to directly engage. Very recently, that same, uh, that same vision has been refreshed. Uh, again, the council put it into the hands of a, a separate group of citizens. This time, the chair of that group of citizens was the vice-chancellor of the University of Melbourne. Similar techniques were employed, uh, events, uh, online discussions, but a new factor was introduced. And this, uh, this new factor is, is starting to grow in its, its use within uh, Victorian local governments and perhaps more widely across Australia. And that is the use of what are called, in our country, citizens' juries. It's a process by which you seek citizens to come forward uh, and then random, random, randomly select them against the characteristics of their community. So in this case, out, out of several thousand people who put their name forward, 42 people were chosen that the council could say uh, with, with genuine honesty that they were representative of the community at large in terms of income, in terms of uh, gender, in terms of diversity, in terms of background, all of that. They were not experts. They are not intended to be experts. They are a little bit like a jury in a courtroom where, you, where the experts have to put their opinion to them and they have to decide which is the best way forward, really based on common sense and common sensibility. And uh, this, this is a practice which is going to grow. It's, it, has this, it has this name of participative democracy, uh, but it really is going out to the ordinary people to advise their elected representatives on what the right thing to do is for whatever the topic is that they are commissioned to do. It may well be something that, um, uh, that could be of use to you in your cities. Um, and that citizen's jury, uh, in, in the case of the future Melbourne refresh, it spent six weeks uh, giving up their own time voluntarily to hear from, uh, from experts, to, to request more information, to, to dis debate alternatives, and then ultimately uh, to provide recommendations to the council. They were encouraged to share their views in terms of digital city, climate change, the future city economy, urban growth and density, and the role of citizen and government, which is a really important thing, I think, every now and then to ask the community exactly how do you think the roles are playing out. That's not to say that this replaces the, the proper electoral system of, uh, of voting people in, but it's a way of staying in touch. 
And we believe that this process and the citizens jury have given us great value, have given the council great value uh, to steer us in the right direction. But we continue to ask the question, how can understanding these needs better empower the community and better inform our work? Uh, we're building on collective impact approaches. Collective impact looks at bringing communities together to solve complex problems. Uh, Councillor Louis referred to that. Um, but there are many different ways in which you can source the intelligence of your community to solve common problems. The really important thing is why would that community bother to give you their intelligence? You actually have to build their trust. You have to build their trust over a long period of time. Uh, you have to make them feel that they will actually benefit from making their contribution and you have to make them feel that actually this is for them. And that's a really important thing. Um, tools can be used to assist this. Uh, in, uh, at the City of Melbourne, we have a standing portal within our website, which is called Our Participate Melbourne, which, uh, which regularly puts up uh, opportunities for people to make feedback. The importance of having a standing portal is that over time you build knowledge amongst the citizens that that's where they can go to engage. So again, rather than doing these things sporadically, the continuous nature of it uh, is very important. Through that we share information about our decisions and performance and we let participants know how their views have influenced what we do. That feedback loop is incredibly important if you're to maintain trust. We've also, as many cities, and you've heard many people talk about this, we've begun our own open data platform where the city can uh, release its own, its own data freely for use by the community. And uh, in, in the same way that I think was reflected on in the session earlier, uh, what that tends to do is it tends to give app builders uh, and, and other people like that an opportunity to take that information and then turn into other things that can bring value to them. In some ways, it is also, in addition to being a, an engagement exercise, it's also an economic development exercise because it's feeding, uh, feeding new businesses. In doing so, we hope to increase our transparency, improve public services in doing so, and support, as mentioned, new economic and social initiatives. Uh, social entrepreneurship is a very important um, factor that the City Council wishes to support. Um, collaboration with our communities helps shape a vast range of municipal activities from health and community services, urban planning, retail, tourism and arts and culture. Uh, an example of this is uh, Melbourne has, um, as you can see in this photograph in front of you, a lot of trees but we've recognised that in climate change and an increasingly hotter environment, it's going to be necessary to increase the tree canopy cover. Uh, and the target has been set for getting for the whole municipality to have a 40% canopy cover. And in fact, we're taking that idea to the whole of the metropolis to try and achieve the same thing. The city could go and just plant a whole lot of trees itself, but what the city has, has chosen to do is to make this personal for its citizens. And one really clever little device that was dreamt up by one of, our, um, one of our junior people was to enable people to send an email to a tree. They could, because we have our trees in, in a um, asset uh, register system, we can identify a particular tree. And somebody could send it an email. They could ask the tree how it was going, you know, who its friends were, um, how did it feel about the future? And it got a reply. You got a reply. You know, really, it wasn't from the tree, but the, the, the experienced people who, um, who know about how trees are going could reply to them. That actually made the council's policy making a lot easier because suddenly the problems that we saw on our side of the fence were shared with them. Uh, that sort of technique, I think, um, I, I recommend if you can do it. It's not expensive, especially if you are digitally enabled, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's a two-way transfer. Uh, in, the, in climate change response and energy efficiency uh, and renewables, 
similar techniques are being employed where really our job as a council uh, is not to do it for people, but to put information into the hands of people so that they can do it, it's do it themselves. Give them the information that enables them to make the efficiency case, which invariably is a business case for saving money. Give them, give them the information as to how they might prepare themselves uh, for adapting to climate change in a slightly more difficult future. Where necessary, provide small amounts of money where, uh, where that makes a difference. But increasingly, as you get people participating, the cost of these things goes down because scale delivers reduction in cost. Um, in all of this at the Council, it, 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 it is wanting to maintain a sense amongst its community that change is a valuable thing and continuous change is a valuable thing provided it is continuous improvement. If you do it that way, then the change is not necessarily shocking because it's an evolutionary change rather than a revolutionary change. Also, again, on this, this notion of um, making people feel that the city is their city, I might just mention a few other things that the council does that goes to, to fill that. The council runs uh, itself, it runs a destination marketing service. So anybody, anybody in Victoria, or anybody in Australia, or anybody in the world for that matter, can log in and find out what's going on, not just put on by the council, but put on by all of the businesses and cultural institutions and other events within the city. You can, it becomes a reliable and trusted source of information that makes, if, my, if I want to go out somewhere at night, I can quickly find out what my choices are. That sort of service builds a relationship. The Lord Mayor, our Lord Mayor of Melbourne, is on talkback radio every week. He takes calls from citizens who are ringing in to either discuss something with him, to complain about something, and it might be quite small, uh, or to challenge something. And he, he's provided with information, and I must say he is an extremely skilled communicator, which is important in these, these circumstances. And that builds an incredible amount of trust with the community because it basically says to the community, your council is listening to you. And that's a very important thing. The council itself backs that up by having public questions in every single one of its committee meetings. And a really interesting thing that the council did many years ago that I think is terrific is that it put the majority of its town hall, the public places in the town hall, into the hands of a private sector venue manager so that anybody can actually book spaces in the town hall to, to use them for whatever purpose they would like to. People have weddings in the town hall, conferences are held in the town hall, board meetings are held in the town hall, birthday parties are held in the town hall. It all just helps to make the community feel this is their city, this government is there for them and it's an ongoing relationship. I hope that's of interest to you and I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jeff, and I think it's a, it was a wonderful uh, inside views that how the city of Melbourne has engaged the citizen in the whole planning process and how this they are taking care of the citizen feedback. You okay. So uh, what, what we are uh, looking into that overall that I think uh, your presentation and your uh, inside views will help our Indian cities because we are, a lot of Indian cities are here and I'm sure that the projects and programs that you are implementing at your city levels really can take these, uh, you know, feedbacks. I know that most of us are now at the moment engaged engaging citizen, but still I think the innovative ideas and platform can be taken from the uh, city of Melbourne. Uh, uh, we have just small changes in uh, the sequence, uh, I guess uh, here he has to leave, so can we allow him? Yeah. So uh, I'll request uh, uh, Hyderabad, the Municipal Commissioner, sir, to take the uh, podium. Thank you. And I request all the panelists to uh, keep it short, so 10 minutes is maximum, so that we can have a time to discuss and get the questions also and answer them. So thank you very much. 
Good afternoon. Uh, I am Dr. Janardhan Reddy, uh, Commissioner, Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation. Hyderabad uh, is one of the largest cities in India uh, with uh, an area of 625 square kilometers and with a population of around uh, 10 million and with five zones, uh, 30 circles and 150 wards. <coughs> Recently, Swachha Sarvekshan, uh, so this uh, annual examination was conducted by Swachha Bharat and Hyderabad stood number one in uh, very big uh, metro cities like uh, Mumbai and uh, Delhi and then say Bangalore and Chennai. And uh, among 434 cities, it uh, stood uh, 22nd. And uh, because of the incessant and uh, innovative activities that we have been taking, and we, have, we are making lots of strides to make uh, Hyderabad the one of the oldest and uh, cultural historical cities to be the best in uh, India. In uh, India, in many of the cities, uh, these uh, open uh, garbage points uh, you, we will witness. The reason being, many of the lanes and by lanes are inaccessible to the larger uh, trucks and uh, autos, etc. You, traditionally, uh, the waste is collected using wheelbarrows or the rickshaws. And uh, since they cannot travel around 10-15 kilometers uh, to deposit the garbage in the transfer stations, they deposit in the open sites. And it is true that in many municipalities, municipal corporations, they lift once in 24 hours, sometimes even once in 12 hours. But suppose, say, at 12 o'clock at one particular point in the afternoon, we lift. Le up to 11.59, uh, it, it is exposed and the people uh, suffer and it attracts a lot of uh, ants, uh, what is the flies and mosquitoes and uh, bacteria, etc. So, we have identified around 1116 such uh, garbage points uh, which are vulnerable in Hyderabad. And uh, last one year, we said, we decided that we will eliminate them. Eliminate means once you lift again, people will uh, put there. On sustainable basis, we will eliminate them. So, how? We diagnose the reasons for that. And 10% of the citizens, uh, they don't want to give this municipal solid waste to the rickshaw or auto pullers, and therefore they deposit there, number one. And uh, then uh, this some, sometimes, since only rickshaws are used, they also don't want to travel, transport longer there. So in place of rickshaws, we have given auto rickshaws, that problem is sorted out. And uh, the 10% uh, even let, uh, educated, prosperous, but uh, what do you say? They're not uh, municipal friendly behavior to, to we counsel them. So, and we have changed them by painting them there and by conducting rangoli and uh, then uh, plantations involving the local residents in the celebration, etc. We have conducted this and the violators were educated, garlanded, etc. And to induce the thought of responsibility in them. So, these are the some of before and after photos. Then, another important thing is in India. Uh, because of the narrow roads, many places, 90% of this cleaning is done to 100% even in some time, some cities, manually. The roads are swept manually. So, workers are given on pinpoint basis from which kilometer to which kilometer they do. But often times, citizens don't know who is the worker working there. Therefore, on the walls, we have introduced this system. In, 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 uh, unlike in western cities, where uh, you can access the data, who is responsible for what. Here, uh, the, we, the worker sweepers' names are written and their supervisor name also is written along with the phone number. And we conducted parcheyam, know your worker, in all the streets and all the wards and all the residents welfare associations. And in case of grievance, they will uh, ad, ad, uh, approach them. And if there are good, uh, they are good sweepers, they are incentivized too. The dignity of labor, their accountability, and they are identified from the worker's side. We, we were working anonymously for all these years without names and with vulgar names sometimes. And uh, then uh, increases the accountability and transparency also. And uh, another important, uh, uh, unlike in the Western countries, developed countries, the habit of source segregation is not there in India. To induce for the first time, even if it is costly, sometimes people say it is not sustainable. If it is not uh, matched with uh, other uh, IEC activities, etc., twin bins were given uh, for uh, wet and dry waste segregation at source for all the 22 lakh uh, households. Then, uh, as I said, 
in place of rickshaws, still rickshaws are there for lanes and small by lanes, etc. But around 2,000 autos were introduced, each auto carrying around 800 to 1,000 uh, uh, quintals per day. And the auto will have the uh, chamber to collect dry and wet separately and then to transport. And they will not uh, dump in the intermediate places, they will take it to the transfer stations. So these vulnerable garbage points thus were eliminated. Then another important point is in Indian cities and all Asiatic cities, source segregation is the solution and source segregation is the problem. So to take this message very strongly to the citizens, we conducted a drive uh, during the Swachh Sarvekshan and unite the family and divide the waste. Throughout the world, families are getting uh, disintegrated, husband and wife, diverse rates ranging from 43% to Belgium 73%, uh, so in Australia. So then uh, we said, said, let families be united, it will enhance the happiness. And if waste is divided, and if waste is uh, getting united in these countries. So with this innovative idea we went, in fact, uh, to reach basically, uh, to increase the outreach, uh, like why we should segregate. And of course, uh, these are uh, small initiatives. And then uh, these electronic toilets, uh, which was recently uh, Bill Gates Foundation also applauded. Uh, that in many cities, you don't have toilets, you don't have she toilets especially, and even if they are toilets and she toilets, and they are not maintained well, this auto maintained, and uh, then um, uh, the, uh, the napkins are also available, auto flushing is also available, and unmanned. And it's liked very much, for the first time we did it in Charminar, around 100 we are installing in Hyderabad. Then another Im very important innovation word that we brought, uh, which can be emulated without investment uh, in many cities, is these fuel stations are adjacent to the uh, roads. They have, uh, they have toilets too. But generally, we have a feeling, they have a feeling, that it is only for those who ride the motors. Those who go on motors go with 80 km, 100 km, etc., stop there for uh, getting fuel, and they'd hardly use it. And uh, for us, we don't have enough toilets. So we requested through using Gandhigiri uh, to give the access of petrol bunks uh, to the general public. And petrol bunk is there, adjacent to the road. We have around 369 toilets for last uh, 60 years. And in last three, four months under Swachh, Swachh Bharat activity, around 300 such toilets were brought to use for the common men and women and physical handicapped, etc. In even restaurants, we have requested them to put a board, sign board, that the toilet will be for the public use. And uh, every month on first Saturday, we conduct Good Practices Day. There, the citizens and resident welfare associations should identify the best practices and workers, and they should uh, felicitate. We'll only, uh, what do you say, uh, we'll, we'll facilitate this program. We'll not do this program. And of course, uh, pay wall paintings. This is also most of 90% of these citizens will do it and uh, to enhance the beauty. We will not spend from the municipality. Municipal corporation, local body will not spend money. And uh, under corporate social responsibility with Godrej and ITC, dry resource centers uh, are being done. And of course, this is a uh, very neat uh, uh, food program wherein uh, for 5 rupees, 400 grams and uh, dal uh, rice and 100 gram dal curry, etc. is given for the poor in our city. And laying of plastic roads with the help of the people we have taken up. And graveyards development also with the citizens and, uh, and corporate social responsibility, we are doing this. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think uh, uh, the, your, your detailed presentations uh, talks about a lot of activities that uh, Greater Municipal Hyderabad is doing under the Swachh Bharat missions. And uh, I, I think these are the activities that really shows that the how cities are taking to the national missions at the ground level. I think without your, con your and leadership, leadership involvement, these, are, uh, these would have been possible. So I, I, I think it's a really great achievement, sir. And I'm sure that uh, uh, many more things has to become. So with this, uh, I would like to move to the another city, uh, which is one of the, I think, top uh, city announced under the Swachh Bharat Sarvekshan. It's a uh, Baroda Municipal Corporation and uh, I, I request uh, Honorable Mayor to take the podium. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Dignitaries on the dais and of the dais. 
we are using two terms from the morning one is government another is the governance government means rules and governance means implementation whenever we deliver something that is the governance government is all implies the authority while governance means the accountability government is all about the power and governance is all about the empower government is all about the file file while governance is about the life life so whenever we deliver something without citizen engagement we can't do anything in a civic issue whatever we are facing every day that in a short term what vadodara did in the different different areas except the road buildings water distribution drainage networking what is the main focus of the vadodara nowadays we did from last one and a half year when i become a mayor and then we started something differently i think this is the presentation as i am also a academic academician in my university faculty so i just start with the one small videos because nowadays we know that instead of the presentation videos we are showing so small videos for everyone then we'll discuss something else Gujarat popularly known as Sanskari Nagari the confluence of knowledge education and art means Vadodara the city that has been established and nurtured by Kailash Vasi Shrimant Sayaji Rao Gaikwad III has become synonymous to development the credit of this unprecedented development goes to the efficient and devoted team of Vadodara With their consistent efforts and leadership, Vadodara has achieved many milestones. Vadodara has actively participated in the nationwide cleanliness drive, inspired by Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Bhai Modi. Nirmala M Helpline. quick response to complaints for immediate cleaning and waste disposal solutions the centralized call center received more than 25000 complaints various programs like school sanitation cleanliness pledge safety kit distribution to the sanitation workers during chintan shivers were organized prize distribution to the winners of ganesh mandal cleanliness competition by honorable mp shri mansukh bhai mandalia 3500 swachhta mitra individually honored by renowned gandhian shri gurmant bhai shah 120 cleanliness patrol tricycle were released by honorable cm shri vijay bhai rupani and here the proud moments for vadodara the cleanliness survey was conducted by government of india and results were announced by honorable prime minister it is a matter of pride that vadodara has secured its place in top 10 cleanest cities of india the beautiful lakes are identity of vadodara it is believed that 31 lakes were developed in regime of shri sayaji rao gaikwad an in depth planning of these lakes as well as bifurcation of 2100 slums and their rehabilitation programs will be carried out under the leadership of vmc vadodara city has around 38 numbers of ponds which are targeted under beautification proper planning and its real implementation in the last 3 months around 25 lakh square feet of land area costing about 1000 crore rupees has been opened from illegal encroachments will begin the lake cleanliness campaign very soon an intensive tree plantation will be done surrounding the lakes by using bio shields and bio engineering techniques the clean and green areas surrounding the lakes would enhance the beauty of the city in order to develop these lake areas as a cultural hub and picnic points they will be facilitated with jogging track relaxation area and green slope at manjalpur Sindhu Sagar and Siddhnath Lakes, Gotri Lake, Harni Lake and Sama Lake. Today, when entire world is under threat of global warming, the trees would probably be the answer. 
on the 17th of September 2016, more than 10,000 trees were planted at Sayaji Bagh with a mission of Green City, Vadodara and the target to plant 1 million trees for beautification of Green Badodra before the 15th of August 2017. The tree plantation was done by Honorable Minister at Badsar during Swachhata and Samrasta week and landfill site in the city. With more than 257 species of tree plants, it will be the first living tree museum of Gujarat. To solve the traffic problems of the city, approximately 18 kilometers of roads have been cleared from encroachment. By positive support from Barodians, it becomes possible to develop wider roads. A step towards gaining the new heights in terms of cleanliness and beautification means e-toilets. In order to decrease the financial burden on VMC, the rights of commercial advertisement will be given to the external agencies for e-toilets. The beautification of Alkapuri underpass and Padmavati shopping center porch underpass has been done under public-private partnership. Chani and Lakshmipura cemeteries are also developed by VMC. With inspiration of former Chief Minister of Gujarat and current Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, the Khel Mahakumbh was organized in Gujarat. The tradition has been kept alive by Sri Bharat Dangar, Mayor of Vadodara, by organizing Mayor Cup 2016 at Vadodara. All the age groups had participated in various games with great enthusiasm and VMC awarded them with cash prize, trophies and certificates. The VMC is committed to the fact to celebrate each and every festival with utmost joy. On Janmashtami, 20 feet high Dahi Handi competition was organized and winner team was honored with the prizes. City beautification has been started by developing more than 100 gardens in the city. Vadodara city has mainly four entries from surrounding area which is planned under beautifications with light and greenery. We planned to restore and illuminate historic buildings and statues in the city. The spirit of Vadodara camp helped to make sculptures out of scrap. Organized by the Vadodara Municipal Corporation has produced works that are set to become landmarks in the city. Municipality always aims to bring in citizens' participation in cleanliness and cashless drives. Every Sunday, VMC organizes a carnival with a slogan of Clean Vadodara, Cashless Vadodara at Akota Dandia Bridge. Thousands of citizens enjoy varieties like aerobics, selfie zone, volleyball, skating, painting and many more. Citizens take oath with Mayor Shri Bharat Dangar for Clean Vadodara, Cashless Vadodara. VMC is giving much efforts for the cashless transactions. For that, HDFC Bank executives remain present at various cash collection centers of VMC. POS machines are installed for payments through credit and debit card. Net banking, e-wallet, UPI based facilities are also available. One can pay the property tax and professional tax online. The efforts of VMC and Team Vadodara have taken the city to new heights. Today, Vadodara city is marching forward with a dynamic energy and unparalleled imagination to become one of the best and smartest city of India. The cultural capital of Gujarat. Thank you very much. These are the basic thing what we change in our city regarding cleanliness, cashless, greenery, beautifications of lakes, beautifications of the roads, buildings, heritage building. So I think without citizen support, we can't do this. And for citizen engagement, as I am an engineer professor, engineering college professor, we use the word, the energy cannot be created, neither can be destroyed. It can be converted from one form to another form. So save the energy. So when we use the energy of the citizens for a better man and constructive work, we can do this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And I think uh, I was just speaking in the before these sessions, and uh, he was saying that the Baroda was before his term. Baroda was ranked, I think, more than two and four, and in his uh, terms, he is now under the top ten. So this is what I say that the visions and the leaderships makes the 
things change. And I think the national policies that we are talking about, I think, doing a very good job, sir. Thank you very much. And with this, I'll just move to the, my next uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Johar. Uh, Johar Saroni is the Chief Knowledge Officer of the Tel Aviv Yafo Municipality. He attended a public administration master degree and the social work at the Tel Aviv University. Previously, he served as a social service municipal planning and the information director, and later became among the earliest worldwide appointment as a chief knowledge officer of the municipality. Thank you, sir. With you. Hello to you all. Uh, can you have a, my presentation, please? Guys, 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 hello. Presentation, please, thanks. Uh, I, we don't have too much uh, uh, time. We're over our time, so I'll make it very, very fast. You found it? Le the left? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you make it? Uh, that's it. Okay, guys. So Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, we have a booth there. You can come. We can visit. We have a coffee there and drinks, so, so you can come. But I want to uh, speak about uh, Tel Aviv. It's a very creative city, very talent city, very tolerant city, and very technology city. And a lot, a lot of startups in the city. You can be in Tel Aviv, you can dare in Tel Aviv, you can do whatever you want. In 2014, we won the best smart city in the world in the Barcelona conference. And we won it not because we are the best smart city in the world. We have a lot, a lot of projects like every city in the world. Readiness rooms and smart street lighting and smart traffic lights and smart regression management. But the main power is the knowledge that we have about our people and the Tel Aviv smart city is improving the citizens' quality of life through engagement. The digi Tel Aviv digital transformation, we made it in the last 10 years. We made some government to govern projects, government to citizens projects, and citizen to citizen projects because you cannot make citizens' engagement without government engagement. So there are a lot of silos in this cooperation, municipal cooperation, and the citizen is working through these silos. How do you take the workers themselves or this municipal cooperation and make them transparency, a culture of sharing and integration, and mastery thinking? So, after we made some knowledge management, a big knowledge management project in the municipality, we moved to our citizens. And we built our website in the eyes of the citizens, not in the eyes of the corporation. And we made a lot, a lot of transparency, and a lot, a lot of e-services, and a lot, a lot of services and services and services. But when we asked our question, two questions, five years ago, our citizens, we asked them two questions. The first question was, what do you think about the city of Tel Aviv? They said, the city is great, it's the best city in the world. The second question was, what do you think about the municipality of Tel Aviv? They said, terrible municipality, bad municipality, thieves, bureaucrats, and so on. Why? Because we as citizens love to hate the government, okay? So we understood that we have to give information according to citizen needs, and not and just the right information they need. So the municipality, like every municipality in the world, is improving every important moment in life, the city is with you and what, what and for you, okay? The circle of life, okay, that's it, the circle of life, give citizens information and technology and services according to uh, the circle of life, focus on each residence and bring your municipality to intelligently active municipality, is giving services and information before the uh, citizens know they need it. So establish a digital citizen club, it's a club for citizens, loyalty club. They are getting a lot, a lot of benefits. They are getting a lot, a lot of information. Personal city information, for example, only the, the citizens who are actually living in the street will get your street will be closed due to construction work and what we are going to do to you, for you, so not to you. And transformation and, for example, fireworks. Uh, in the Independence Day, where are the fireworks near your home, not where are the fireworks in the city, okay, and when. And if you have to uh, register your child to a preschool, we know as a municipality that you have to, we have the database, so why do you have to wait to, the, to, the, to their parents to register it? They are getting alert 6 a.m. in the morning and the day it's opening the registration. Link to registration, two minutes, without need to identify themselves, they can register to and register their child. We can, of course, invite a lot of citizens from neighborhoods and we can ask them what to do with the budget. And we are giving a lot, a lot of benefits to the citizens because municipality is not just taking taxes. And municipality is not just bureaucrats. Municipality can do great things in the city, also in India and cities. Free yoga on the, top, the roof of the uh, municipality and running groups for free from the from municipality sponsoring it. And Zumba lesson in the corporation, in the municipality itself. And movies and free ice cream for youngsters and pool parties. 
okay, and free tools, and dog life, okay, we actually invited all citizens who have a dog to a movie with the dog in a cinema, okay, because we have a database of the dogs, who owns the dogs, so we can combine them, invite them, only the citizens, and today actually there is a diggy dog card only for uh, uh, dogs in Tel Aviv. So it's amazing that to bring people to the city hall. This is the issue, not to, to break these silos, to break this hostel between the citizens and the government. And for example, today in Tel Aviv, this evening, if there are empty places around the theaters and movies in Tel Aviv, the citizens get alerts, half a price, come today to the theater, you can, after 15 minutes, all the theaters in Tel Aviv are full, okay? And if you want to go to the beach, if you have a digital car, you can take it on one dollar instead of five dollars, if you have a digital citizen's card. It's free, of course. This digital citizen card is free. It's only for the citizens. Of course, personal area, multiple channels, and a lot, a lot of doing. Uh, and finally, today we are deploying in India. Uh, this is what I'm here. I actually came from Tane. Tane is in Maharashtra. We are doing their DigiTane for one-stop solution for lifestyle and info service. We are having a triangle of uh, Foxbury Technology, which is an Indian company, and TSG, which is an Israeli company, and, uh, and we as a knowledge champions of the municipality, we are doing it together, one-stop shop for a lot, a lot of information. Services will be customized and personalized for each user basis, their interests, hobbies, and preference. Digichani is doing a lot of things with a smart card. We can glad, we'll be glad to help you and to do it in your cities because we think this is the smart city. This is a smart city. Smart city is not technology. Smart city is not sensors. Smart city is not smart transportation and not smart grids. Smart city is citizens. Citizen. And you have to engage your citizens because if you will ask them what you are doing, what do you do you do now? What do you are doing to them for them? <laughs> so uh, um, they, I don't know that they have the great answers. Okay. Finally, this is two days ago in Tane. We took all the HODs, we took all the engineers, we made sessions, we had great ideas. What can we provide services and information to uh, citizens? And we were very, very glad to uh, host you in our pavilion of the Israeli pavilion. You can uh, get a lot of information from there. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Johar. I think a lot to learn from this presentation. That is what I, I must say that, because I think uh, we all are uh, sitting in the panelists and, uh, and, this, and, and the audience also. I think there are a lot of cities are there. And I guess these are the learning things. And I'm sure that the city will get benefit out of that. And I'm sure that the city's engagement can be done that way. Thank you very much. With this, I would like to move my last panelist so that we can have a, some time for the discussions. And uh, uh, we'll take a questions from your side. And we, uh, we have uh, deputy mayors from Nasik. Uh, thank you very much, sir. स्मार्ट सिटी के इस कार्यशाला में उपस्थित सभी आदरणीय अतिथि सभी कॉरपोरेशंस के सम्मान्य मेयर और डेप्यूटी मेयर और कार्यशाला आयोजक इन सभी का नासिक महानगर कॉरपोरेशन की ओर से स्वागत करता हूँ और हार्दिक बधाई देता हूँ भारत सरकार ने अत्यंत महत्वपूर्ण स्मार्ट सिटी अभियान के अंतर्गत और केंद्र सरकार राज्य सरकार और महानगर निगम इन सभी के आपसी सहयोग से महानगरों को अधिक से अधिक स्मार्ट बनाने की योजना पंतप्रधान नरेंद्र मोदी जी सरकार ने बनाई है इस सब प्रक्रिया में सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात यह है कि स्मार्ट सिटी प्रोजेक्ट बनाने के लिए सभी नगर के जनता मतलब जो आप जिस सिटी में रहते उधर की जनता ने आपके स्मार्ट सिटी के इसके अंदर सहभाग लेना चाहिए और ये जो स्मार्ट सिटी का मिशन है जनता की सहयोग से ही पूरा होगा जनता जब स्मार्ट बनेगी तभी ही जन अपना सिटी स्मार्ट हो गई इसी इसलिए इसके प्रोजेक्ट प्रोजेक्ट में जिन जिन योजनाओं की सूचना हमें बनाई है सभी जनता ने जनता के काम आने वाली है और जनता के जो भी सूचनाएं उस नगर के निगम प्रशासन ने बेकूब से पूरी पूर्ण की है यह हमारे लिए खुशी की बात है इसलिए स्मार्ट सिटी के प्रोजेक्ट पूरा होते हुए शहर की जनता इस प्रोजेक्ट की और पूरी जागरूकता से ध्यान देगी और ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा काम करने के लिए 
कॉरपोरेशन की प्रशासन भी ध्यान देगा जनता की सहभा की वजह से शहरों शहरों में जो काम होना चाहिए वह काम जरूर होगा जनता की सूचना एवं सुझाव उपयोग करने से नासिक महानगर के प्रशासन काम करने के लिए दर्जा बढ़ेगा नया तंत्रज्ञान और कला की नज़र से नज़र की मदद से प्रशासक शहर के सौंदर्य में बढ़ोतरा कर सकता है शहर सुंदर होगा तभी देश की देश की सुंदरताई बढ़ेगी माननीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी साहब के देश के बारे में जो सपने देखे हैं वह निश्चित पूरा हो पूर्ण हो गए इस सूचना और मार्गदर्शन के अनुसार नासिक महानगर निगम स्मार्ट सिटी प्रोजेक्ट का कार्य सभी प्रयोग सहयोग से सदस्य जनता और प्रशासन अधिकारी इनके सहायता से करने जा रहा हूँ और स्मार्ट सिटी की प्रोजेक्ट माध्यम से हमें और भी निखार पाएंगे तथा देश का मानस पटल पर एक अच्छे साफ सुथरा एवं स्मार्ट शहर के रूप में स्थापित कर पाएंगे इस आशावाद करता हूँ और नासिक महानगर निगम का स्मार्ट सिटी प्रोजेक्ट के अंदर चयन किया गया इसलिए पंतप्रधान मोदी जी का नासिक महानगर निगम की ओर से बहुत आभारी हो और ये जो प्रो, प्रोग्राम आयोजित किया है जिन्होंने मुझे दो शब्द यहाँ स्पीच करने के लिए बा उनका भी आभारी हो जय हिंद thank you very much sir i'll just uh, maybe uh, summarize what he said for my uh, international delegates uh, he is from the nasik municipal corporation he is a deputy mayor and he spoke about the uh, selection of uh, nasik uh, under the smart city programs and uh, how the citizen has actually engaged in the whole programs and how really the engagement of the citizen benefited in the developing the whole smart city plan and he is really looking forward the implementation part of the uh, nasik smart city program to make the cities more clean green and livable so this is what actually he uh, this is just the gist of the his speech so thank you very much sir and i think with this word i would like to now open uh, the floor for the questions uh, uh, maybe uh, you can introduce yourself and uh, direct the questions to the panelists so that it's easier for the uh, giving you back the answer thank you very much Yeah. Hi, I am Sachi, and I am representing Dhalera Industrial City. So my direct question for citizen engagement is: When our 74th Constitutional Amendment Act was declared, we had the ward level committees. But if you'll see now, the ward level committees are not functioning that well. Also, like we have this in the Smart Cities Forum, we had the citizen engagement forum. But now, when we are going into the implementation of the projects. how how effective will this citizen engagement forum will be carried out or is it like it will again stop like the ward level committees have stopped so that is my direct question and to maybe mr zohar what your presentation was it was all on citizen information and the services the citizens would get but did it help to engage the citizens during the making of the decisions for the municipalities or was it uh, did it help to build the trust so this was a, some direct question thank you uh, we'll take five questions straight away and then we'll answer uh, next back side please uh, public consultations as it to be the most primitive form of uh, citizen engagement uh, i think we've put a lot of emphasis in the smart cities mission on public consultation in the various forms uh, can you tell us about uh, especially badodra and uh, nashik if um, if if they can Uh, about participatory budgeting uh, in their cities uh, to what extent is that happening i mean the lady mentioned uh, mohalla samitis and sabhas i mean is it uh, is it happening uh, is it something in the works thank you um hi good evening and good afternoon rather sorry um so my question is from the citizen engagement perspective uh, please introduce maybe it's really easy for us Hi, uh, my name is Tejo, and I am running a open data and a citizen engagement startup in India. So, my question is basically: see, right now we have about 4,000 urban local bodies in India. So, is the engagement happening at an urban body, local body level, or at a city level? That's the first question. And citizen engagement is—it's it's supposed to complement also the capacity building aspect of it for delivery of garments. So, how is it helped in different cities which have presented so far? That is something which I'm curious to know. Thank you. no more question so uh, maybe we can try to answer jor you would like to start first yeah um i didn't have time to show but the word is trust you are very right if the citizen doesn't trust you nothing is worth so 
to gain a trust, it takes time. Uh, so we have to engage with them. It's a two-way connection. It's not just that the corporation municipality is informing the citizens. It's two-way. We are hearing them. We are inviting them also frontally, also to our meetings, not just virtual meetings, you know, and gaining their trust. The fact that most of the 60% of the citizens in Tel Aviv have today digital card and gave us their email, their mobile phone, their habits and so on, it's all about trust. So, but you have to earn it. You have to, see, to show them what we are doing for them. Okay. Uh, बहुत अच्छा नासिक के मेयर को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हिंदी से बोला और बाकी मैं यही सलाह देती हूँ हर बार आके कि इंग्लिश से स्पीक दें स्पीच दें और बाकी हिंदी से ही बोलें क्योंकि सभी लोगों को हिंदी आती है इंग्लिश से स्पीच नहीं आती है तो समझ में नहीं आता हम लोग टाइम वेस्ट करके आते हैं तो इंग्लिश कुछ समझ में नहीं आती सर से ऊपर निकल जाता है तो कुछ ट्रांसलेशन हिंदी से भी होना चाहिए जैसे कुछ इंग्लिश से बोलें तो कुछ उसका ट्रांसलेट करके कुछ हिंदी से दो मिनट बताना चाहिए कि इसका शब्दार्थ ये था तो हम लोग को समझ में आए बहुत अच्छा लगता है हम लोग आते हैं यहाँ और बहुत काम की बातें रहती हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हम लोगों को यहाँ बुलाकर स्मार्ट सिटी के लिए बुलाया गया बहुत काम की बात देखने को मिलती है इतना अच्छा कचरे में भी ग्रीन फील्ड बनाकर दिया बहुत अच्छा लगा हम लोगों को सब सीख देखने को मिलती है लेकिन ये ग्रीन फील्ड कितना अच्छा बनाया गया कौन सी खाद डाली गई कि जो कचरे में भी जहाँ पॉलीथीन है और जहाँ मिट्टी नामो निशान की नहीं है डस्टबिन है डस्ट है लाल है मिट्टी है वहाँ कैसे हरा भरा हो गया कैसे ग्रीन फील्ड हो गया ये बताया जाए कि हम लोग कैसे ग्रीन फील्ड बनाएं जहाँ पर पॉलीथीन से भटा पड़ा है जहाँ मिट्टी नाम की नहीं है जहाँ कचरा है कांच है वहाँ पर कैसे हम लोग ग्रीन फील्ड करें जहाँ तीन सौ पचहत्तर एकड़ हमारा सतना स्मार्ट सिटी आया है मोदी सरकार ने हमारे सतना को भी पिछड़ा था इतना सतना सतना को स्मार्ट सिटी दर्जा दिया है अभी आया नहीं वहाँ पैसा नहीं आया ये नाम बात अलग है छठवें नंबर में हमारा सतना भी रहा स्मार्ट सिटी को दर्जा दिया गया लेकिन आया नहीं अभी अभी तीसरे नंबर में इंतजार है कि सतना स्मार्ट सिटी में नाम आएगा हमारा इंतजार है लेकिन वहाँ पर ग्रीन फील्ड कैसे किया जाए और अन्य जगह में जो डेड जमीन पड़ी है उसको ग्रीन फील्ड कैसे किया जाए उसको नया नुस्खा बताया जाए हम लोग भी कुछ करें ये इंतजार है आप लोग कुछ सजेशन दें यही हम लोग चाहते हैं और भी नया तरीका कुछ बताएं देश विदेश के यहाँ लोग आए हुए हैं अभी नासिक से हमारे मेयर साहब ने बताया बहुत अच्छा लगा हिंदी में बोला बहुत अच्छा लगा जो इंग्लिश मैन बैठे हैं वो तो हिंदी समझ लेते हैं लेकिन हम लोग हिंदी मैन इंग्लिश नहीं समझ पाते हैं इंग्लिश बोलने वाले ऐसे फर्राटेदार इंग्लिश बोलते हैं कि सर से गुजर जाती है हम लोग हिंदी इतनी अच्छी बोलते हैं कि आप लोग इंग्लिश बोलने वाले कुछ ना कुछ तोड़ मोड़ के समझ जाते हैं कि ममता पांडे ने भी क्या बोला मैं महापौर मेयर हूँ सतना से मध्य प्रदेश एम मेयर हूँ ममता पांडे थैंक यू मैम बहुत अच्छा लगा मैम आपकी बात सुनकर और ये हम हिंदी में इसलिए शायद नहीं कर पा रहे क्योंकि यहाँ पे बहुत सारे इंटरनेशनल डेलीगेट्स हैं मैम जिसकी वजह से कन्वर्जेशन थोड़ा सा टफ हो जाता है एंड बिकॉज ये लोग भी बहुत दूर से आए हैं इनको भी समझना थोड़ा सा तो आपकी बात सही है और हम कोशिश करेंगे कि जो भी चीज़ें डिस्कस हो रही है उसको आपको थ्रू हिंदी ऑर्गेनाइजर कैन कन्वर्ट इन कर सकते हैं और रहा सवाल जो आपको जो भी आपके क्वेश्चंस हैं ये ये मंच ही ऐसा है मैम जो जहाँ पे आपको ये सारी चीज़ों की जानकारी दी जाती है यहाँ पे हमारे बहुत सारे एक्सपर्ट्स हैं इवन तो एग्जीबिशन पार्ट अगर आप जाते हैं तो वहाँ पे भी बहुत सारे ऐसे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैं जो इन सब सेक्टर में काम कर रहे हैं और ये आइडिया ये है कि सारे एक्सपर्ट्स और, और टेक्नोलॉजी एक्सपर्ट्स प्रोवाइडर को एक जगह पर मंच पर बुलाया जाए और मैं मैं आपसे खुद मिलूँगा इस सेशन के बाद आपको मैं उसमें हेल्प कर सकता हूँ और आपको गाइड कर सकता हूँ सो नाउ कमिंग बैक टू क्वेश्चन यस प्लीज जो मैडम ने जो क्वेश्चन आपने जो रेज किया कि कैसे लैंडफिल्ड साइड पे कैसे हमने ग्रीनरी को मेंटेन किया उसमें ऐसा था कि वहाँ से कोई भी बंदा गुजरता है तो भी बदबू के साथ गुजरता था ऐसी हालत थी कि उस रोड से कोई जाना भी नहीं चाहता था हमने क्या किया कि वहाँ पे सबसे पहले थोड़ा सेग्रीगेशन करवाया कि एटलीस्ट पोलिथीन वहाँ से निकाले थोड़ा उसको मशीनरी वगैरह लगा के थोड़ा उसे निकाला बाकी जो था वही फर्टिलाइजर के तौर पे यूज हुआ और ऐसे ही प्लांट हमने वहां पे प्लांटेशन किया कि जो प्लांट इस माहौल में इस मिट्टी में या ऐसे एटमोस्फियर में बड़े हो सकते हैं और मैं बताऊं पहला म्यूजियम ऑफ ट्री हम लैंडफिल साइड पे बनाने वाले हैं पहला म्यूजियम ऑफ ट्री और इतना अच्छा अभी डेवलप हो रहा है हमें बहुत बार सारे चैलेंज सामने आए थे कि क्या होगा ये होगा या नहीं होगा सर्वाइव करेगा या नहीं करेगा लेकिन काफी अच्छा सरवाइव भी हुआ और अभी अच्छा मेंटेन हो रहा है 
इसलिए करना चाहिए और लैंडफिल साइड वैसे भी अगर आप प्लास्टिक को निकाल देते हो तो बाकी जो रहता है वो फर्टिलाइजर के तौर पे वैसे ही उपयोग हो सकता है थैंक यू सर सो सर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विथ यू डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द रिगार्डिंग दार्टिसिपेटिंग बजट एंड मोहल्ला सभा सो इट वॉज क्वेश्चन डायरेक्टली रिगार्डिंग मोहल्ला सभा स्टिल दैट इज आई थिंक सेवेंटी फोर इज नॉट uh implemented in every state i think uh, not in central government also but second thing is mohalla sabha we are doing in our each ward the concept of the mohalla sabha is what to get the feedback from the citizens and how we involve the citizens for our development work at the local areas what we did in our vadodara city mohalla sabha is one that the physical we are doing second nowadays people are using the Uh, social media the, the maximum youth are using social media the youth don't want to come into the mohalla sabha but they want to give their feedback through social media so we create one platform in the social media to get a feedback from the youth second thing we always we also uh, put more than 100 people you have you seen in my video also that call center what is the duty of that person they have to randomly call to any citizens collect their feedback regarding the door to door vehicle is coming or not sweeper is coming or not water with pressure you are getting or not like this and from them we are collect the feedback also so there are so many sources where we collect, we connect with the citizens we get the feedbacks as well as regarding the budget so what happened in the local area ward in one ward we have a four councillor so there are a separate quota for the councillor as well as for separate budget for the councillor where the councillor decide where to use on the basis of the citizens requirements like this we are working on that thank you uh, i just maybe uh, because it's a good topic and i think most of the i think in many part of the world the participating budget is a buzzword and i think a lot of cities are working on that i i just wanted to understand from the city of melbourne and the from your city uh, johar it really it's it's it's, a, it's it's been part of your budgeting this participating budgets are part of the system you know the citizens are paying taxes so it's their money so why don't you invest in, invest in your citizens not just take their money and just let let them pay you taxes and all kinds of things that but you have to invest so of course there is a budget for it and of course most of the events are free because it's their city and it's their money and we have to think how to use it in order to engage with them in a better way yeah thank you kevin you want to put some with with the city mom can i just address uh, was, i think there's a lady in the back earlier discussed about the the that whether community consultation was crude uh or at the city of melbourne it it's imperative that we do do community uh, consultation because we didn't whether uh, for whether it's uh, is about uh, planning parks or even for open space for the benefit of citizens the uh, the difficult part is you've always in in a democratic process there's always two parts even even with creating open space and where there's a particular project now we've got in uh, in West Melbourne where we're creating open space but there are there are parties that are for and there are parties against certain designs of it so we do go in terms of uh I think community consultation is very important but what are the different forms of it in the city of Melbourne our community consultation is about inviting the citizens or inviting uh people that are affected in that in in the immediate area to uh to attend whether it's attend a, a general meeting or or attend a specific uh information evening where we can at least outline but we we try to listen to our citizens and certainly uh, we we're, we're not quite as sophisticated tel tel aviv in terms of being able to digitally inform the citizens uh, for privacy and other reasons but consultation is very important in terms of uh needing to not necessarily the council is going to take on board all the uh, all the uh, fours and all the against but our 
our management will certainly take on board all the comments and certainly and then and then provide a recommendation to council uh, as as they should. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, it's really good. And last, I just wanted to answer the question about the uh, city city's engagement, uh, whether it's a city part or it's a, some area part. So I think the most of the smart cities project, it's been the city part. And uh, uh, it's, it's up to the urban local bodies how they want to engage the citizen in the developing phase. And most of the cities has used, I think, all means of uh, communication, all, all kind of a platform, whether the social media, where, uh, where, where you can say Mohalla Sabha or maybe you can say the ward level meeting. So all these, I think they have done, when most of the cities has, has done at least under the Smart Cities project. And uh, the capacity building, yes, it's also the part of the system because if you know that then there, there is a separate missions are going on, which is called uh, individual capacity building programs, which is a part of the Ministry of Urban Development. That also covers the uh, more than 500 cities under the missions. They are, uh, and now the ministry also has started the training program under the Smart City project. Uh, they have a seven themes under that SPV is going to be trained by the different institution. We are one of them. So I, I think these, these all are uh, uh, inclusive packaging, I can say that. And I think these, these missions are that the reason we are seeing on the ground. Uh, I think uh, if there is no more questions, uh, then I think uh, we have answered your or most of your queries and questions. Still, if you have any questions and uh, any anything that you want to discuss with the panelists, so I'm sure they are going to be here around during the lunch break. So they, you can catch them and you can have interaction. So uh, I, I really thanks to all my panelists because uh, the, 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 the presentations and the discussion was happened is really uh, had a, an, a, I mean, enough information so what you can take it back to your city. Uh, that's important. This platform is only providing you the uh, such kind of uh, experience where you see what is happening in the city of Melbourne, what is happening in the city of uh, Tel Aviv. So all these are experience, even Baroda and Nasik, uh, Greater Municipal Corporation. So I really, I am sure that this must be uh, useful for you. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to thank my all colleagues because they uh, have done a fantastic jobs. And uh, I, I really, it's a pleasure to work with the exhibition of uh, Exhibition India in organizing this mayor conclaves. Thank you very much. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to request Mr. Ravi Ranjan to uh, felicitate our uh, panelist, Mr. Mr. Kevin Loy. Mr. Joff Lawler. Shri Bharat Dangar. Mr. Johar Sharon. Shri Prathimesh Gite. And I would like to call Ms. Sonia Darshan on behalf of Exhibitions India Group to felicitate Mr. Ravi Ranjan.